Welcome to another episode of What to Say and How to Say It, the podcast to help you fix your marriage. We are navigating some really tough topics today in terms of pain. How do you deal with pain? How do you struggle, suffer, thrive? Oh, that's a high tall order through it. <laughs> you know, we're supposed to have joy as Christians all the time. Like I'm not perfect at this, but you know what? If we don't get better at it, we run the risk of losing our testimony, even our faith. The dark night of the soul. Let's get into this. We are talking with our favorite licensed professional counselor, Kyle Hargrove, who's been on planet earth for a minute with me. Well, not together. He lives in Texas. <laughs> Way down here. Way down there. I'm a Midwest girl at the moment. I still have a hard time claiming that from Montana, but nevertheless, we've been on the planet a minute, which means if you've been on the planet a minute, you've suffered too. You've struggled. You've had pain in your life. And so we're going to talk about not so much physical pain, although that will probably come up because we've both had that too. And so have you. <laughs> Um, but more so, you know, what does it mean to be long suffering? How do you navigate suffering well? So Kyle, when, when we talk about the topic of pain, when you think of, you know, how you minister, how you love your clients well in this space, you know, if you, if you would have a goal for them, uh, what do you think that would be? I, I don't think it's fair that you ask a question of me about how I navigate something well when I'm not sure that I do. Oh, <laughs> or, or I was I, really hoping. <laughs> or that I ever have. So, uh. you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm claiming resentment right now. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> Thanks for admitting that. That's bold of you. Um, I'll work on all of that whole thing. No surprises next time. But it, it, honestly, though, I mean, you're better we're both better at suffering than we, we were probably 30, 40 years ago. Right. I mean, that's fair. Right. I agree. Okay. So granted, neither one of us are probably arrived. You're more humble about it than I am probably true. Um, what do you think is the difference between you 30, 40 years ago and you now, when it comes to pain and suffering and how you handle it? Well, we're definitely going to go with the emotional side of this because I think the physical side of it is self-evident. Um, there's a lot more of it. <laughs> oh, mm -hmm. And that, that there doesn't always seem to be a reason for it. Um, you know, how many days do you wake up in the morning when you're, uh, you know, when you're in your 50s, 60s and, and beyond that uh, something hurts and it's never yeah. hurt before and you didn't, you don't remember doing anything to it. Uh, <laughs> I, I, you know, I haven't jumped off the second story roof in quite some time and yet it feels like I have yeah um that's that's not fair but it's reality but I have to say in uh in regard to uh emotional relational uh living life pain that the way it looks and uh and lives out now is considerably different than it was, you know, uh, when you're in your twenties or your thirties, maybe even your forties. Um, it, it, it doesn't seem quite as unfair now as it did then. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying I like it anymore, right? but I, I think after, after living a few decades as an adult and, uh, you know, and believe me, I, I ratcheted my maturity up very slowly. It did not happen a, a lot and in a hurry when I was younger. But with some maturity and wisdom behind you, you recognize not only the need for the pain, but you recognize the reasons for it. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't make it feel any better. But, you know, we talk a lot about being able to, to name and to normalize the things that we're dealing with so that we can either learn to rinse and repeat. Hey, that felt good. And, and I want to do that again. I want to have that feeling more mm -hmm. often mm -hmm. or, you know, embrace painful emotions Yeah. so that we, we, a know a bit more about them, perhaps why they're there and be able to hopefully avoid them in the future. Mm. No, that's, that's good. Understanding the source, 
the wrong thinking patterns, the desires, the longings. Some of them are healthy, some of them not so much. And you know, yesterday, uh, huh, I've been in a long season, too long. In my opinion, God didn't seem to <laughs> ask me about what I thought about this length of season. Um, <clears throat> you know, I've lost both of my dogs in a four month span in the last six months. And people be like, they're dogs. Well, I had one of them for nine years, the other for 12 almost. And they are part of it. Like if you're a Rosner dog, you are a blessed creature. Like yes. no joke. They are pampered. They are cared for. They have conversation. We do it well. And I'm not one of these people that dresses my dog up. They're big dogs. You don't do that with big dogs. Right. Be if I had a small dog, like I might consider that because kind of sweaters. Like I could maybe be that person. I don't know, but I'm a big dog person. And and I didn't I didn't sign up for this. Like it didn't occur to me how much this was going to hurt losing those two. And and then there's been all this other stuff on top of that that I'm not going to go into. But there's been like and the, and the dailiness of the illness of one of those dogs. And we kept having hope, and then it kept getting dashed. You know, hope and that. Yeah. You know. And um, if you've been listening to the podcast for a while, you might be going, "Is she still talking about her dogs?" Yes. <laughs> I am, although I'm much better about it. Um, but I had a, a sweet friend of mine yesterday. Um, you know, I was talking to her about another um, painful thing that happened recently. And she said to me, Nina, sweetheart, I'm just going to preach some truth to you right now. You need to die. And I, I, I like and took breath very quickly. Like, like what? what? <laughs> 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 yeah, I had a moment like, like, you know, I hadn't really entertained those thoughts just yet, but thanks for putting that out there now. Like, <laughs> and I said, um, okay, care to tell me more about that? And she goes, Nina, you know, the Lord is good. You know, he has a word for you in this. You know, he is pruning you. You know, he has called you according to his purposes. You know, she starts all this, you know, stuff. And I'm like, and she's speaking scripture at me. And I'm like, it, part of it is reassuring. And the other part, I just wanted to choke her. And, <laughs> and she goes, do you not think that death is painful? Your flesh will be with you as long as you are alive on this planet. And it will hurt every time some piece of you needs to die. Sacrifice it. Sac and I'm like, what am I supposed to give up? What am I supposed to lay down at the altar? What am I not seeing here? You know, am I supposed to? And I'm there's this thing I want that may, it looks like I'm going to get, and it, I'm thinking it's in alignment with a gift that God's giving me. And I'm really struggling with this whole thing. And every time I go to him, he's like, no, Nina, this is my gift for you. So I'm so confused over it. She goes, Nina, it's not the gift. It's your desire for it. That's what needs to die. I felt like I just got, boom, you know, blown up. <laughs> ah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yahweh, yeah, wow, right? <laughs> Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah, so so I took a deep breath and I and I thought of Eve and the curse. The desire will be for, you know, in that case it was her husband. Well, how many desires do we have for? You know, and it's the same kind of controlling, longing, gnawing that the you know crouches at your door waiting to devour you, kind of thing. And I was like, ooh. You know, did I step into that? And I think I did a little bit. So as painful and awful as it is to hear someone say to you, you need to die. She wasn't wrong. That thing needed to be put to death. So I'm going to have a ceremony. I'm not inviting anybody to it. Like it's instead of a pity party, you invite all sorts of people to those things. But I'm not I'm not inviting anybody to it. I'm going to have a little thing this afternoon. Um, and I'm I'm writing all of the desires around this thing on a piece of paper I'm going to set that on fire in my oh, so, I'm so glad to hear you talk about the use of fire because, <laughs> you know, I think ceremonial things yes. like this require using fire and or chopping something down. So it's, it's kind of a guy thing, but I have uh, fortunately uh, a yard you know, blessed with, with many, many shade trees to the point that we can't grow grass, but uh it, it, I think, is is very similar to this process. You know, it's a pruning thing. Mm -hmm. 
you know, dying to ourselves. And, you know, Peter tells us a lot about this because he struggled with it so much. Oh, me too. And, huh. and dying to ourselves, in, in other words, you know, uh, eliminating or abandoning our own desires. It's, it's an unnatural act. It's, mm-hmm. it's not something that's in our DNA. It's something that's in God's DNA. Yeah. And short of him being in us, we're not very good at it. And sometimes mm-hmm. even with him in us, we're not very oh, good. Oh, man. <laughs> well, and don't you think that's the space where, like, we're missing it? Like, he's in us, but he isn't in this space. Like, that's that little <clears throat> thing right there. And, you know, you bring up Peter. I, you know, I think of Peter and Jesus and that conversation where Jesus is all, and, and this is my hippie version of Jesus, but because I, I watched Jesus Revolution, <laughs> Chive and Rumi from The Chosen, and I'm like, yeah, it's my hippie Jesus. I'm kind of a hippie girl. So anyway, this speaks to me, probably doesn't need to say any of that. But anyway, so Peter and Jesus having the conversation and, and Jesus is all, hey, Peter, you know, you're going to go do the thing. But, and, and Satan's asked to sift you, but don't worry. I've prayed for you. And I, and I, rem- I, re- I read that and I go, why didn't you stop that? Like you, you're, you prayed for him. Like, why didn't you like yank Satan around and go, Hey dude, like we had this conversation, like you don't get to rule stuff. And you yeah. know, I'm in charge, you know, sit down, shut up with this guy. Like he could, no, he's prayed for you. Okay. Satan's asked to sift you. Hey, which, what is that? That's a warning. You, you're going to go do a thing for me. By the way, it's going to suck. <laughs> okay. And then I've prayed for you. I'll be with you. It'll be fine. Well, he didn't even say it would be fine. It, it's That's life though, isn't it? Like we long, and I think a marriage, we long for our partner to support, encourage, love, you know, in, in the way that we want to hear it. And when it doesn't happen, then we get tipped over and Jesus is like, yeah, you did that again. When are you going to learn? Like you haven't put that to death yet. Have you? I hate that. (laughs) Think we lost everybody at this point. I doubt it. I imagine they're probably sitting on the edge of their seats saying what's going to be next. Yeah. How do you recover from that? Yeah. (laughs) It's, it's interesting we're talking about this today because um, it seems to have been a common theme of late in, in, in my virtual therapy office about the amount of control that we feel like we need to have over mm-hmm. our own lives and unfortunately over the lives of others. Mm-hmm. And for a couple of clients, just... just <laughs> recently is two and a half hours ago, uh, we're having this discussion and talking about when does it, when does it seem like I'm going to be able to stop trying to change the things about other people that cause me emotional pain and instead adjust my expectations. Mm -hmm. You know, the body of work shows that this is an issue. (laughs) <laughs> body of work also shows that no matter how hard I've tried to change somebody else, it hasn't worked. Right. Why would I continue to stay in this place of, of, you know, of mm-hmm. being hurt, carrying the hurt around of, of agonizing over it. Uh, but what I have to do is I have to die. I have to lose my desire to control and change situations and people. And again, not in my DNA, but it's the thing that, it's the thing that happens. You know, it's, uh, the story that I remember so vividly hearing someone talk about, and I've, you know, I've thought about this thousands of times since I heard the story about Moses and Pharaoh. And the, the dance that they did for so long, back, back and forth, you know, uh, you know, b- based on the plagues in, in, in Exodus. Mm-hmm. And they went back, you know, the, the, the water turning into blood, the locusts, the pestilence and famine and all those things. And, and, and each time 
that God would send a plague, Pharaoh would call in Moses because he knew that Moses was God's man. Mm -hmm. And he would say, look, we really can't live with these locusts all over the place. <laughs> you know, this is a problem. They're eating the crops. They're, da -ba -da -ba -da, you know, you know, talk to your God and see if maybe he can call this thing off. And Moses would say, well, the reason this happened is because you've hardened your heart to God. Okay, okay, I, well, I'll fix it. I'll fix it. Just ixnay the ocus lay, mm -hmm. you know? And so the plague would end. Pharaoh, of course, made no changes. He didn't soften his heart toward God. And so another plague would come. But the one that, that catches the attention, if you look at it real close, is the plague of the frogs. Yeah, you know, I don't. I'm, I'm Gross. not by frogs. However, remember where we are. It's Egypt. Yeah. Okay. Uh, climate a bit on the warm side. Yeah. Okay. So when you get frog flesh everywhere, nasty. It's covering the ground. You know, it's in the microwave ovens and the refrigerators and everything. I mean, you can't open anything or go anywhere. It said the frogs were even in the bed with the people when they tried to sleep. It's so nasty. And so, you know, Pharaoh calls up Moses, you know, hey, hey, get over here. We got to talk to you. So Moses shows up and Pharaoh says, we can't live with the frogs. This is absolutely unsustainable. Moses says, God would have you soften your heart toward him. Okay, okay, fine. I'll do it. I just get rid of the frogs. And then Moses this time asks an interesting question. He said, when would you have God remove the frogs? And Pharaoh says, how about first thing in the morning? Moses tips his hat, walks out. First thing in the morning, the frogs are gone. This is an adapted version, of course. Here's the question, though. Why would Pharaoh choose to sleep with the frogs one more night? Yeah, like, that makes no sense. Yeah, but he did. You know, so I, I, I use this story to talk about some of the things that, you know, the pain that we carry with us mm -hmm. and it's chronic we've been carrying it carrying this load for years and maybe even decades long mm -hmm. and we don't have to but we're used to it why do we choose to continue mm -hmm. this? why would we see sleep with the frog whatever your frog is today right. Ooh. Why would you choose to sleep with that frog one more night? Yeah. You know, and pain is often that way, emotional pain. Mm -hmm. Physical pain, sometimes, sometimes there's not a lot we can do about it, or we have to wait for Medicaid to come through or whatever it might be. But the emotional pain, there's almost always, well, there is always, you know, if we're, if we're casting our cares onto yeah. him. Yeah. Right? The ability to at least lessen the burden, mm -hmm. but maybe even to remove that burden, either by what you talked about earlier, you know, cutting back on the desire, mm -hmm. you know, working real hard for something, but maybe it's not the right thing. And then on the other hand is changing our expectations rather than trying to change people. Mm-hmm. No, that's good. And that's getting rid of some froggage. Yeah, it, my word. <laughs> yes, those, those two things together, you know, make a pretty solid plan for people, I think. And it, the hard part for a lot of people too is that they're so accustomed to living in it that they don't know what living outside of it looks like. Mm, yeah, we call that becoming best friends with our pain. Mm -hmm. Best friends with our worst habits. Yeah. And at least we know what to expect. Mm -hmm. And surprises are the things we like the least. If I try something new, if I step outside this zone of, it's not necessarily comfort, comfort, but it's a zone of expectation and I know what to expect. If I step outside of that, there may be surprises. And I don't like surprises unless it's my birthday. Yeah. No, that's Which, by good. the way, honey, if you're watching or listening, my birthday's next week. So 
Well, happy birthday, she's... Kyle. Well, I think <laughs> she's watching or listening, but I don't really care about birthdays anymore. But... You get to uh, a certain part uh, of your life and it's like, yeah, can we go backwards? Can we go the other direction? Yeah. Can I be 27 like again and again and again? Uh, yeah. I don't know if I'd pick 27, maybe 37. I could deal with that. Mid mid 30s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something like that. And yeah. I just took us completely off our train of thought. That's okay. Yeah. And I don't remember what train we were on. Yeah, which train was this? <laughs> Expectations and um laying down the desires, which it, you know can be similar but also different at the same time like they're nuanced mm -hmm. implications how did i get on my birthday what the heck? i know right like that's what happens for all of you who are not over 40 this day will come to you just saying and then you'll be like oh i remember they warned us like it's real it's real yeah yeah help us so, Jen. yeah oh gosh mm -hmm. yeah the the thing that is frustrating too is the long suffering to be a, the ability to suffer well is a earmark or hallmark that's some kind of mark of maturity <laughs> i don't like that at all um but it makes sense um because the two-year-old in me would want to stamp her foot and scream and yell and then throw myself down on the floor kicking and screaming and the mature person goes yeah all right you can do that if you want to. It's unproductive, but all right. And then the even more mature person doesn't stuff it, but goes, all right, let's, hey, hey God, you got a minute? Let's just, there's some ugly stuff in here. Let's just pull all this out, lay it on the floor, poke around in it for a minute. Like who wants to do that? Nobody, nobody. But what's true is if we don't do that with him, we're not going to grow up. We're not going to change. We're not going to show up different. And that pain is going to remain. Yeah. And, and I mean, I don't know how many illustrations there are throughout scripture. You know, one that comes to mind is, you know, iron sharpening iron. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of things about the purification by fire. I don't know about you, but uh, fire touches my body. It hurts. Mm -hmm. Okay. But there's a purification process. And of course it's, it's analogies. It's, it's, uh, you know, we aren't expected to walk through big pillars of fire but but you know iron sharpening iron i mean that's a violent picture in my mind you know those are swords coming together that's uh you know sharpening my chef's knives that's there, there's a lot of things there that are really dangerous and potentially painful yeah but we have to remember when it comes to relational pain, you know, pain that, that comes because of a relationship and because of our relationship with somebody, what they say, what they do, what we've said or done. I mean, our pain may be regret, who knows? But uh, understanding that, that the growth and the way that we bond in a relationship happens through pain. Mm -hmm. Okay. It happens yeah. through trial. It happens through difficulty and it happens when we walk out of the other side of that difficulty holding hands instead of signing documents. Yeah, no, that's a good point. And a lot of couples, well, not just couples, like people in relationships, like father, daughter, daughter, mother, like you get all of this sons you know, with parents, you get this, you can either fear bond with people where you have chaos as the thing that holds you together um, or you have resolved chaos yes where that stuff gets ironed out no pun intended uh to the point where people can be sharper yeah and wiser in that space and it is not an easy process yeah it's ironed not out. uh issue resolved wisdom cached mm -hmm. okay now we got wisdom to put away in our box yeah and pull it out when it's necessary to use it mm-hmm but you, you don't get those things. You don't get the, the lessons and the learning and the wisdom unless you walk through the fire. Yeah, I, yeah it's funny. I, um, it's not funny. I saw a meme where um, there was the Red Sea and it was parted. And the this inscription was, you know, God did not <clears throat> make the water disappear. He showed you the way through it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the analogy that, speaks volumes to me is that you've got to go through this stuff you've got to go through there's no way around it you can't skirt it you don't get off 
from not dealing with it. Can't avoid it. You've got to meet it. You've got to put your foot in the water and he will show you the way through that. Yeah. And you might feel like you're drowning in the middle of it. They didn't in that moment, right? Absolutely. They were following the Lord though. And that's kind of the point. He's got you. Yeah. Even when it feels like he doesn't, he's got you. You said something earlier, and I don't know if it was in our pre-recording prayer or if it was right after we started this uh, thing we do. <laughs> you used the words, and talking of pain, thrive through it. Mm. And I, those struck me. Uh, and I wonder, you know, do we thrive through something or do we thrive because of it? Mm. Uh, we're talking about pain. So I know mm -hmm. that was the topic. Yeah. You know, I, God help me thrive through this pain. And, um, but I think, you know, to, to, to thrive through it, you got to walk through it. And walking through it means you're going to feel whatever you feel because of it. You know, and, and we, you know, <laughs> I'm all about avoiding pain. Nah. I, I don't know about you. Uh, I'm allergic to pain. Uh, it makes me feel bad every time. <laughs> um, and it's just going to be a matter of, of, how, of how bad. Yeah. But, you know, I have, you know, let me, let me state very clearly. I have made choices in my lifetime that have brought great pain, you know, and have, yeah, have to deal with the consequences of those choices. Mm -hmm. And I'm not void of that. Just because we're talking about it doesn't make us good at it necessarily. Oh, amen. Yeah. You know, and if it's the character thing, you know, walking through this stuff builds, I got enough. Okay. Please, God, I have enough character. <laughs> okay. I, I, don't, I don't feel like I need any more. And I pray, pray so hard that uh, I don't have to have more pain in order to build more character. Mm -hmm. But I had, I had a client very early in my career who I'll never forget. He is uh, long since passed way too early. As a matter of fact, not long after this, this conversation that we had in mm -hmm. the therapy session. And his name was Dave. And <clears throat> man, he was, he was going through it. He was going through some rough stuff. Most of it having to do with his own choices and behaviors. And as a believer, those choices and behaviors didn't necessarily go away. And he was really struggling to reconcile his behaviors and his actions with his relationship with Christ. Mm. And a lot of us have that. And he was sure. deep, deep, deep in it. Um, and so I recall beginning to see progress with Dave over a period of months of therapy and having him walk in one day and he looked different. And so I couldn't wait for him to sit down and get the door closed and, you know, sit down and say, Hey man, how you doing? So that all happened. And I said, how you doing today? And he looked up and he smiled and he said, poised, but in pain. Mm -hmm. And I thought to myself, we're going to have to just stop for a minute here and digest that mm -hmm. because it recognized progress. It recognized understanding. It recognized lessons being learned. It recognized the pain of having to learn those lessons the hard way, but it also recognized the progress. Mm. And I think sometimes we feel like we have to have one or the other. If I'm in pain, that means I'm not making progress. Mm. If I'm making progress. That means I shouldn't feel pain. And I don't think either of those are necessarily true. Yeah, very astute observation there. I agree wholeheartedly. Wow. And then he died shortly after that. The lover dead of a heart attack. Wow. Whoa, wow. While taking a walk with his wife. So. Hmm. Remarkable. Oh, yeah. So everybody we know is going through something. And everybody listening, I mean, you may be in a space where you're, you're getting a bit of relief, you know, a rest, a respite from life's whatever, but most people are listening to us because they have trouble, they're discouraged. So what 
piece of advice would you give to a listener that's been struggling for a minute or longer <laughs> and uh, encourage them as they navigate this stuff? Well, <clears throat> sometimes encouragement doesn't necessarily come in happy words. Right. And we talk so frequently about understanding that not just our life on earth, but our life as, as uh, followers of Christ is not a process, it's a journey. Hmm. And I think that we have to understand that this journey for some of us will be long. And, um, and there will always be pain in it. Always. There'll be, there'll be pain for lots of different reasons. Uh, not always having to do with our choices, but sometimes the choices of people that we love and care about very much. Truth, yeah. Um, so don't shoot for a life or a lifestyle or an understanding that, you know, that you're going to be void of emotional pain because uh, I don't think that's possible. The only way I feel like it's even possible is if you're void of relationships. And then if you're that, then you're going to be very lonely. Mm. So understand pain is a part of the process it's part of the journey mm -hmm. yeah that's that's very very true and you know I, I remember somebody saying to me well the lord disciplines those he loves and i'm i'm like well i wish you would love me less right now like <laughs> i've had enough of this and you know sometimes the the bringing a scripture that's about discipline not useful like most people just need to know they're not alone in it. Yep. And, you know, I've got a, a, such a beautiful group of people that I do ministry with and are friends of mine. And like, God has blessed me. I'm the richest woman on the planet when it comes to relationships. And I'm so thankful for that because there's always somebody like Job's friends hit home runs when they just sat there with their mouths shut and just were with him. And so often that's all we need. And I think if I were to give a piece of encouragement to somebody today around this, it'd be find yourself that person that you can say, hey, I'm suffering and I just need you to sit with me in this. Will yeah. you do that? And if you don't have that person, we have people that want to be that person for you. You know, so mm -hmm. reach out, send, send us something. You can go to our website at greaterimpact.org. And you can get yourself our little booklet. But what that does is you know, it's a booklet for five tools to stop walking on eggshells, but it also gets you on our mailing list. And then you can reply to that email and somebody will follow up with you. You're not alone in this. And, yeah. and if you're not the person that needs that other person right now, then be that person. Ooh, yeah, good. Because, because God never asks us for our abilities. He asks us for our availability. Hmm. You know, and that may just mean sitting with mouth closed, holding someone's hand, mm -hmm. praying with them, not, you know, praying, silent, whatever. It, it, up. Mm -hmm. That's the, that's the hardest part is just showing up. God will take care of the rest. It's, it's not, it's not that hard. That's awesome. Beautiful. And I, I just want to put in a little plug for our women's conference that we do every year, Strength and Dignity. That's coming up in May. Uh, people form lifelong friendships at this thing. So I want to encourage you ladies, if you're not signed up for it, go to the website, get signed up because it is something worth doing. People stay in contact afterwards. We have a group for you in our um, social media site, uh, our membership site. So please, please, please consider joining us in that space. Um, but I, yeah, go. Uh, I love you. And no, <laughs> <laughs> there, there'd be things that would have to dramatically change for that mm. to be possible. But Danny is welcome to come. Your wife. Okay. She, yeah. Right. She, yeah. That well, just I don't want to have to endure the pain it would take for those things to change. So, um, and you would still not be what you are now. Well, that's a whole other topic, sir. But Boy, anyway, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Jesus loves you just the way you are. And that's all I'm going to say about that. And that's like, I've uh, opened the politically incorrect can of worms at this point, but that's okay. Um, send me hate mail. I don't care. Um, the bottom line here is you're not alone regardless. We love you regardless where you're at. And um, we want you to know that uh, pain is inevitable and what you resist persists. So embrace that. Know you're not alone. Jesus is with you and you are wildly loved by him and by us. Let us know if you need help. 
Thanks for stopping by today. Be sure to um, check out other episodes around conflict and uh, you too can change your huh, stressed out broken marriage. Love you guys. Mm -hmm.